Greet the church with the peace of the Lord. Ask that we may all stand. Let's open our Bibles in Exodus chapter 17. We're going to read 5 and 6. Ask that the brother may keep the Bibles open because we're going to read a few verses. Exodus 17, verse 5 and 6. Amen. And the Lord said to Mo Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand there before on a rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that people may drink. And so Moses did in sight of the elders of Israel. Amen. The brother may be seated. Brother, in the period that Israel lived, it was a moment right after the exit of Israel, of Egypt. There was two million people. They left through the desert. I'm not going to say without a path, but because the Lord was with them. But by faith, they left. Waiting for the Lord to provide. Waiting for a miracle. And now the people were in the middle of the desert. And the Lord was taking care of all things. Their, their clothes did not go to waste. Their shoes. There was... The Lord directed them. There was heat when it was cold. They were refreshed during the day. And now, in this moment, the people were thirsty. And so the Lord talked to Moses and said, Moses, get the elders. And before the people, you're going to get your staff, and you're going to strike the rock, and from it, water will come out. And brethren, when we talk about the desert, what comes to mind immediately? A few things. But when you have an image of the desert in your mind, what comes? what comes in your mind? Who can help? Heat, sand, thirst, rock. It's hard, it's hard to find rocks in the middle of the desert and sand. So it's hard to walk sometimes. Sandstorms come. Sometimes you have hallucinations. But something that calls to our attention. What man most misses is water. Man can stay a few a few days without food, but being thirsty, if you don't have water, you will die fast. And when we talk here in this text, Jesus, he calls our attention. 
for the time that Israel talked about, and he makes us remember. He reminds us of the moment we live in. It was a new beginning for Israel. They were not used to this. They were in Egypt now 400 years with all the suffering. But there they had their, their houses. They, they worked and they had food. They had somewhere to go. They had somewhere to be. But now, God took them away from that because the oppression was so much because they prayed to the Lord and the Lord gave them a blessing. And the Lord took them out from Egypt and put them in a path towards the promised land. And us as a church, we live the same experience. One day the Lord took us out from Egypt. He, we, he took away Pharaoh from our lives. He took us away from everything that Pharaoh, Pharaoh was, which is the prince of this world, the enemy of our lives. We thought we had a place, we thought we had a life, but what life is this? It's a life that eventually dies. Humanly, it's a life that it would lose. The Lord takes us out, takes us away from Pharaoh, takes us away from our sins, and now he puts us here in a path. We are in the desert. The same way that they felt there, they were hot, they were cold sometimes, and they needed many things. That is the same way we are with our spiritual life. But one thing that can't go missing for the people of God, something that can't be missing for those who want and already gave their life and is already in Jesus, is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. That, that can't be missing. And so now Moses, he gets his, his staff, he strikes the rock, and the rock begins to burst out water so imagine you get a piece of wood and you hit a rock what happens what's going to break first the rock or the piece of wood the piece of wood obviously if you get anything if you get a rock if you hit it with a piece of this seat that you guys are sitting on and easily it's going to break and the rock is going to stay the exact same way but here we already see a miracle from God. The rock. He shook, he shook the rock. And the rock was cracked. And water came out and the staff stayed the same. Jesus, he left his glory. He left the presence of God. He came to this world. He made himself man for us. And he was hurt for our lives. It was the project of God that Jesus passed through what he did. Many tried to not let it happen. They wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to kill Jesus when he was still a kid. And then the devil tried him when he was older. First they wanted to kill and now they wanted to stop him from being killed because it was the project of God that Jesus went through what he did he told, he told Peter you didn't need to get your sword the way you did if I wanted to I could just pray to God and he would send his angels to save me but it is not this it is already programmed in eternity Jesus said there with the leaders that he had to pass through what he did. He told the disciples, he told the apostles. Everyone was told. Jesus not in one moment did he run 
for from what he from what, from what he had gone through because he's our rock he's the eternal rock when he dies the veil of the temple it rips and from then on we have a complete access to the presence of God in that moment waters live waters began to flow in that moment the river opened and we were blessed by the Lord you think that when Moses stroked the rock do you think it was just little drops and little drops coming out? No. When when he struck the rock, there's no image that it was something little. Let's open in, in Psalms. Psalms 105 says, Psalms 105, 40, 41. 41. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in dry places like a river. So when he struck the rock, a river formed so that, so that he could... The water was open and everybody could drink. Every single person that was there, they were able to drink. Everyone was able to fulfill their thirst. Today when we are in the presence of God, you can be blessed. And it is not little blessings either. We are beginning the year of 2019. And every time that you go to the house of the Lord, you will find a river of live waters. You'll find abundance of water. You'll find abundance of blessings from the Holy Spirit. And every time you go to the house of the Lord, you'll leave here renewed. And you can ask. It wasn't anything little either. If you are intimate with the Lord, if you are close to the Lord, yeah, and he, you can ask the Lord anything and he will answer because the Lord is with who is faithful is with those who is hitting the door of grace those who are fasting and if you are doing this every time you are you are up with the Lord you will drink this water imagine here And Niagara Falls, it's like that. Imagine just water, more and more water. That is what the Lord has for us. Because He beat death and He gives us this direction. He gives us He gives us this. Not just for our, for our spiritual life and not just for our material lives, but for every aspect. He has the pleasure of blessing His servants. He has the pleasure of giving you what you want, what you need. Let's open in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. First Corinthians 10, 4. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. We see here the confirmation that Jesus is our rock. He's our base. He sustains us. It's our foundation. He's everything for us. And wherever you go, wherever you are, we see another important point here. Paul doesn't talk about someone that's alone. It says that everyone drank. Jesus said to Moses, 
call the people, call the elders, and in no moment did he separate the individuals. And he said that everyone drank from this spiritual drink. And the rock was Christ. The people walked for 40 years, and wherever they went, the rock was there. The rock followed the people. Imagine. It was a multitude of people. And when they stopped, they would build their tents, their cabanas, the, the temple, the tabernacle. And whatever the Lord said, with whatever the Lord said. And when, and when he told the people to march, when God told Moses to tell the people to march, then they would get all their stuff and the people would walk. One day, two days, three days, until the Lord said, stop, camp here, and stay here. This happened many times, 40 years. 40 years, the Lord directed the people and the rock was always there. Never did the Lord not provide because the people were there following and so the rock was present and so that is what matters for the rock to be present what we need over everything is have the presence of Jesus in our lives and so every time that we are here we help ourselves here in Pompano Beach the rock is present Where there is more than, where there is two or three, in my name I will be there. So if you are here, if there is two or three, in the name of the Lord, then the rock is present. The water is flowing. And you turn to something that is a blessing of God. And you are in the direction. You are in the target of His blessing. The promise of God is for us. And that is why, brethren, it is very important to hear the voice of the Lord. That's why this year, in 2019, it is important to be here in the house of the Lord. Because wherever the people are, God is present. The ministry of, of God and, and people's lives, it is obvious because a servant servant wherever he is if he is in if he is with if he is in the body then he will be blessed and that is why we have to be that's why I have to be attentive and now let's open in numbers numbers chapter numbers chapter 27 and 8 says then the Lord spoke to Moses saying take the rod we found it numbers chapter 20 7 and 8 right in the beginning after Genesis and before Revelation Numbers chapter 20. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock, and give drink to the congregation and their animals. And so one more time we see all the project of the Lord. It's interesting that the Lord tells Moses to strike the rock or to talk to the rock. What did he tell Moses now here in Numbers? After Genesis. After Exodus. After, after exiting already in the desert. What does he say? It says, take the rod, you and your brother, Aaron, gather the congregation, speak to the rock. The 
The rosh was only struck one time. It was only hurt one time. Jesus only passed here one time. Now he's to the right of God. He's glorified. With the body of someone that won. Because Jesus, he is our winner. He is the Lord of Lords. He's a doctor of doctors. He's everything for us. When he... When he beats death, he is now to the right of the Father, praying for us. And that is why now the Lord says to Moses, you and your brother Aaron gather the congregation and speak to the rock before their eyes. No one else has to strike the rock. There is no more need of aggression. You don't need to go out yelling. You could just speak to the rock. Now he says, Moses, you go pray. And Jesus taught us prayer. He taught us that every time we pray to God in his name, that, he, that him and God would answer our prayers. And this year we will do this. We'll be together, the whole congregation. Every time that we get together, we can put our knees on the floor and pray to the Lord. Because the secret of our victory is prayer. The secret of the soul that wins, the redeemed soul, is prayer. Because when we pray, God answers. No one else has to strike the rock. No one has to uh, suffer. You don't got to ask for help. You just, wherever you are, in your silence, you put your hurt on the altar of God. You put your difficulty in the altar of God. And you will see how from the rock, water will come out. You will see how the blessing of God will come into your heart. And you'll see the necessity because there's there's nothing better. And that's what we're going to do today. We need to ask the Lord so that this year it can mark our lives. Not only our lives and not only our home, but our congregation because it is here that we see the miracles. It is here that we see the signs. It is here that we see the answers to the prayers. It is here that the Lord becomes present. And it is here that we will leave blessed from the presence of the Lord. And so the Lord tonight, He calls us. And that is the vision. I saw that there was there was water, crystal, crystal waters here in the altar, and that the water in it was to give eternal life. And some people didn't want it, but once they saw the people that went to the altar and were being blessed, then them, then those people that didn't go at first had the desire of being in the presence of the Lord. And that's what happens sometimes. People, they, they resist and they don't open their heart, but through your faith, through your definition, the Lord will operate in your hearts. And that is why the Lord calls us, so that we, we put on the altar of God what is our necessity. I have my necessities, just like you have yours. It's... It, it can be health, it could be financial life, it could be the, your family life. It doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes it's a document to be legal. A lot of us go through that, but it doesn't matter. Our God is a God that can do anything. And He invites us to put everything in His altar so that we may be blessed. 
vontade, esse desejo de você falar com o Senhor, fazer. de você buscar bater na porta da graça, porque na rocha que é Jesus, águas de Deus fluirão, porque essa é a promessa de Deus para nós. I was looking for it and I was like
Invite the brethren to stand. If the Holy Spirit has already testified in your heart of what you need to do. The question. Sometimes we live with this worry. If it's if it's worth it. And it's interesting that in the vision it showed that those people that went to the altar, they were blessed. And the Holy Spirit has already testified in your heart. He's showing you a better in your spiritual life. Then assume this, not with man, the man, not with the church, but with the Lord. With the congregation of Israel. The Lord also showed a man who got here tonight. And he was old spiritually. I showed that he had old hairs and that he was very old spiritually. He already knows the Lord. He knows the ways of the Lord. He knows that he needs to walk in Jesus, but he is far away. But tonight, the Lord brings him here so that one more time he could re-encounter salvation in Jesus as the Savior of his life. There is no saved once, saved forever. If maybe one time you already had experience with the Lord and you lived, then it served for that time. It doesn't serve anymore to give you this free pass because salvation is lived every day and it is lived in his presence. It's lived in his home, not out there. Your inheritance has to be lived here. And another man has walked in. So if you're, if you're the man that walked in, you are in the Lord's presence once and now you're far away, the Lord calls you today to put your necessities on his altar. The Lord also showed so that we can be careful with our feelings, what we have in our hearts and in our minds so that we don't let any flesh, no investment, nothing that comes from the outside, from the congregation, can take away your blessing. For this, you need to exercise your faith. You need to be reading the Word, using the ways of grace. And so when you are like this, when you're using the spiritual arms, the Lord will bless your life so that nothing can come in and confuse your mind and your heart. Amen? So here are the spiritual gifts from the Lord. Sometimes here we talk to a man or woman, but we identify ourselves. We can identify ourselves with all of these gifts. It has to be maintain, maintained. We need to stay in the Lord's presence and be in communion with the Holy Spirit. Let's have a word of glorification. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for every... We thank you for everything that you have done because you have heard our necessities, because you have took us away from all bad things. We praise you, Lord, because you have been everything for our lives, Lord. We praise you for the conviction, Lord, that we have in being with you. May your name be exalted in our midst, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we ask that your word may stay in our hearts and that your spirit finds place.
and every heart and so that your goodness can stay with us and that your goodness can be over everything and so that nothing bad stays and so that your spirit stays in every heart receive our praise and take us in peace it is a prayer that we make in Jesus name Amen. and in your name we say that the marvelous grace and the love of God our eternal father the eternal blessings and consolations of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. The brother may be seated. If anybody needs prayer, we are at your disposal. The prayer is a miracle. It's a it's a miracle that God will operate. The deacons are here, the workers. So if you need a blessing from the Lord, we are at your disposal. Tomorrow, 1030, we'll be here again to listen to the biblical school. To all, a piece of the Lord.